think I, I think I did it. <laughs> okay, so I'll give everyone a couple of minutes to get on here to come in. I am so excited to be going live and I'm so excited to be talking about my experience um, living in Japan, working in Japan, um, moving outside of the United States, coming to a different country for the first time. So hopefully I will be able to answer all of your questions or give you more insight if this is something you think you're interested in doing. Um, I want to encourage people, please leave comments, leave questions, leave comments. I'm more than happy to answer anything. I'm really excited to see what questions I get. Um, I know personally when I was in the process of moving to Japan, thinking about it, kind of looking at all of my options. I watched a lot of these kind of um, videos, TikToks, Instagrams. Um, yeah, I watched as many as possible. So um, I hope I can be helpful to you and I hope you can get some information out of this. And if you're just watching to watch, welcome. Um, engage with me either in the comments or leave a comment after the fact. I will be checking them in the coming days. In the next few days, I will keep monitoring the comments. Um, I also invite people to reach out to me. Um, I'm on Instagram most. I'm, I'm on Facebook, but Instagram is the best place to reach me. Um, I will leave a comment with my Instagram handle, but it's the Cara Penny. Um, my last name is P-E-N-N-E-Y, um, so just be careful of the spelling. So, it's 9 o'clock, let's go! I have a lot to talk about, and like I said, jump in at any time with questions, comments. Hello. <laughs> so, hello. It's so nice to meet all of you. My name is Kara Moore Penny. I am from America. I'm actually from New Jersey, very close to New York City, and I currently am living in Ibaraki Prefecture in Japan. I have been here since March of 2023. Um, I landed here and then I didn't start work until about mid-April. So I landed here, I had about eh, a week or so of orientations. Um, with other people from my company, and then I started work in middle of April. So I've been working for ugh, two and a half months now. So I'm not an expert, but I do have a good amount of <laughs> insight so far. Um, so just to give you an outline of my presentation, I'm going to be covering my personal background, a bit about working with Explore Asia, and my experience so far. Um, I invite questions at any point, all points, or even if you're watching this recap and you have a question later, please leave it in the comments. I will try to get to all of them. So my background, <laughs> I am a speech language pathologist by nature. Um, I went to college. I did three years in college and then two years of a master's degree for speech language pathology. Um, I didn't know teaching English abroad was a thing. I had no idea. Um, I was very um, focused on speech. I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I just did that. Um, like I said, I, I did an accelerated master. So it took me five years to do the entire thing. Um, and then I worked. I went straight to work. I worked for five years. And genuinely, the pandemic was kind of the switch that made this all happen, that kind of pushed me to leave speech therapy for a little while and America for a little while and to kind of push myself out of the country. Let me explain. When I was working as a speech language pathologist, um, I was working in a school for the severely disabled and medically fragile. Um, it was a draining job <laughs> anyways, but during the pandemic, it was a thousand times more difficult just because of the regulations. Um, my students were very sick. Uh, they had a lot of health issues and the pandemic wasn't making it any better. And I found myself just very uh, depressed. It was a very depressing, sad job. And I said to myself, like, I need to set a goal for myself for something to look forward to, because this is a very depressing um, line of work, especially during the pandemic. So I 
kind of promised myself, it's like, you know what, I'm going to do something fun. I'm going to do something fun. I don't know what it is, but let me find something fun. And during the pandemic, when we were all stuck at home, I came across um, getting a TEFL certification. I have my TEFL certification. I went through the International TEFL Academy. I cannot speak highly enough of them. They were amazing. I got such a quality education. And I actually had an amazing cohort that I still talk to today. And the professor teacher of the class has been an amazing resource for me as well. So I, I can't speak highly enough about it. Um, I was toying with getting a second master's, but I was like, Ugh, I don't know how long this pandemic is going to be. I don't know where I'm going to be. Um, let me do the TEFL certification. It's short enough, it's quick enough, and I can get something tangible. So during the pandemic, I did that. It took me about four or five weeks to get the certification full time. Um, since then, I've actually gone on to get more certifications. I have my business English, my TOEIC. Um, I don't know what the official title is. I have the TOEIC tutoring one, and I'm currently taking a Cambridge level um, tutoring class for English A and AS levels. One thing that I cannot recommend highly enough tutor online. <laughs> um, during the pandemic, I actually started tutoring online because I was stuck at home. I was thinking like, you know, maybe I want to do this. I don't know. I don't know enough about the culture. How can I experience it without actually going? So I actually started to tutor online. Um, I used a website called Cafe Talk. There are a thousand language tutoring websites. Um, some great, some not so great. So do your research first. Um, I started tutoring and I guarantee it's worth doing. Even if you only do a few hours a week, it doesn't matter. Doing tutoring is so helpful because one, you get to see if you like teaching. Um, two, you get to hear what people sound like. And I know that sounds silly, but for me, I worked mostly with Japanese, Korean, Taiwanese students. I could hear the language differences. I could hear what they struggled with, what sounds in their language that they had and didn't have. Um, and that has helped me so much. Now in my current job, I actually pay special attention to the sounds that I know are difficult for Japanese speakers, like R's and L's. So even though I'm working with like children now, um, I, I feel like the confidence I gained, the knowledge I gained, and the connections too, um, from tutoring online was so helpful. So I would definitely recommend if you're like on the fence or if this is a big career change for you, try tutoring. <laughs> it's it's such an easy way to see if this is something you want to do. Doesn't matter the ages. I mostly had adults and teenagers, um, which is not the population I work with currently, but um, yeah, it's an invaluable experience and you can get a little money on the side too. Next, I'm going to talk about how I found ExploreAsia and my experience with them. I think I searched <laughs> every single company in Japan that was hiring ALTs, AETs. I, I've seen both acronyms used. I did research on everyone. I had a Google Doc. I had an Excel sheet. I had graphs and charts. I was taking this so seriously because I was so worried of coming over and being one of those horror stories that I'm sure we've all heard. Um, ExploreAsia has been perfect. <laughs> they have been so helpful. They actually linked me up with a company called Interac. Um, that's who they work with in Japan. And so far, my company has been really good. I'm very happy I did all the research that I did because, like I said, being a horror story was not on my agenda. <laughs> um, Explore Asia also was great because they did a couple of like video Zoom calls um, before we even left the country. So I did a few Zoom calls when I was in America and kind of knowing some friendly faces and also feeling like I could reach out to the staff there made me feel so much better. Um, they also have in-country support which is so nice. I actually email pretty regularly with um, a member of the ExploreAsia team. Um, I have gotten texts from them just, hey, how are you doing? Is everything okay? What can we do? Um, yes, I, I, that is worth it so much for me. They also offer um, cultural weekends, which I remember seeing in like on the websites, but being like, eh, whatever. But now that I'm here, I really am so excited to go on one. 
Um, I couldn't attend the first one, but I am so excited for future ones because meeting other people, other expats in the same situation is so fun for me. That's part of the whole experience. So Explorasia has been amazing and I am so glad I went through a company and not alone because there's too many factors to figure out. Um, there's too much to do on your own, especially if you're not fluent in the language, which I am not. <laughs> I will talk about that more as I go on, but I am not a fluent Japanese speaker. If anything, I am kind of a smart baby level. <laughs> um, I keep telling my friends, like, I'm waiting for the cute factor of my bad Japanese to wear off, but so far, it's still cute and funny, but I know my days are numbered. <laughs> uh, my next topic I'm going to talk about is why Japan? Why did I decide Japan? Um, I was very interested in Japan and my parents were both terrified of me going abroad and actually they were okay with Japan. They were like, you know what? Japan's safe enough. You're okay. The safety. I'm from New Jersey and New York City and not the safest place in the world. <laughs> it is so safe in Japan that it actually scares me sometimes. <laughs> um, the only thing that's not safe here is the weather. Um, where I live in America, not really a lot of earthquakes. Here, they're like a weekly occurrence. Um, I actually am kind of growing immune to them a little bit, and that's a little scary. <laughs> Sometimes we get a big one, and I actually kind of think it's fun just because it's something that I would never experience at home. Uh, the culture. The culture is a big reason why I moved here. Some days I feel like I am an alien <laughs> who landed on another planet and I'm trying to make sense of the world around me. I'm embracing that feeling. I really actually have come to enjoy that feeling. Um, for example, I go to the grocery store like once or twice a week and I usually take my phone with me and I have Google Translate on it. I come home with the weirdest stuff, <laughs> things that just don't translate, things that my... Google Translate says it's one thing and it's another. So I think push yourself to enjoy that feeling. I think it's something that's so unique and an experience that I couldn't have in my home country. So it's it's a fun experience. I know it sounds a little crazy, but I promise it's fun. Um, I would be completely lying if I said that um, my love of anime didn't influence my move to Japan. I really got into anime during the pandemic and I therefore got really interested in the culture and I got interested in the language too. It's actually, it's everywhere here. I mean, even I picked up a tea today and it's Demon Slayer themed. Like it's absolutely everywhere. And it's a really easy conversation starter. Um, all of my students watch it. All of my students have opinions on it. And so do many adults. I actually had a conversation the other day with my principal um, about the latest season of Kimetsu no Yaiba or Demon Slayer, which was like an out of body experience that I was talking to a professional adult about the Hashira. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's an easy conversation starter. And if you're a nerd like me and really into it, you are in heaven here. <laughs> Uh, food. The food is so good. I love Asian food because I'm lactose intolerant and they rarely use cheese in their dishes. So everything is edible for me here. Um, try everything. That is another thing. I'm usually kind of a picky eater, but I told myself when I came to Japan, I was like, you know what? Get over yourself. Try it. So I have tried things I don't even know what they are, but I have enjoyed it. So I do a rest... I do a healthy mix of cooking at home, eating at restaurants, and also like just convenience to, convenience store food. Um, there's always food here. <laughs> like there's easy access to food. I pass multiple grocery stores and convenience stores on my way to work every day. Um, so you will not be hungry. You're not out in the middle of the sticks. Moving to Japan. Um, if you're thinking about moving to Japan, I would download certain apps before you get here. For example, download Line or WhatsApp. It's going to be the easiest and cheapest way to talk to friends all over the world. So I use WhatsApp mostly to talk to my friends and family in America, and then I use Line to talk to other people um, who are living in Japan. Line is the major texting app here. Um, so I would definitely recommend looking at that. 
I see a question in the comments. Is the food expensive like grocery shopping? Compared to America? No. <laughs> food is not very expensive here. Um, there are so many options for your budget. I mean, you could eat at five-star restaurants every night. If that fits your budget, that does not fit mine. So, um, for example, 100 yen sushi here is very popular. Um, yeah, that's a very popular, easy place. I went grocery shopping today. I spent probably 50 American dollars and I have everything for the next week. So yeah, the cost of food and groceries here, way lower, <laughs> which I love. Um, another thing to mention, clothing here is different. <laughs> Japanese people dress conservatively, men and women. I was shocked. I was very shocked that women do not really show their knees. Um, long, flowy, loose-fitting outfits are the way to go here. Um, plan to buy clothes when you get to your country, regardless of where you're moving. I went to Uniqlo when I got here. I think I spent $200 and got a whole new wardrobe <laughs> because I wanted to be appropriate, but I also wanted to still look good. And thankfully, those dresses have gotten me so far. Another thing, too, to notice kind of about fashion, if you have tattoos, they have to be covered. I'm very lucky. All of my tattoos can easily be covered, but please note that if you do, especially at work, it's not really acceptable. So think before you come about how can I cover up the tattoos if that's a necessary problem. Um, also, look up medicines. Look up medicines. That was something that I wish I had done a little bit more. When I first came to Japan, I got a pretty bad case of allergies, hay fever, a cold, and thank goodness I found a girl on TikTok who was talking about um, drugstore medicine. Saved my life. <laughs> so I would look up like, what's the equivalent of Advil or ibuprofen? What do I take if I have a stomach ache in Japan? Um, I know it sounds silly, but like I said, I'm an alien in a different universe right now, <laughs> so I need as much information as possible, especially with pictures. <laughs> um, also, before you come here, make sure that your medicines from home are acceptable here. It's a quick, usually you can do a quick Google search or talk to your doctor before coming here. Um, and I would definitely make sure. I had one medicine that wasn't available here. However, finding an equivalent was super easy and I thankfully found an English speaking doctor. So I would do a little research if you do have medical conditions or um, medicines that you need. I would just make sure you do your due diligence before. My apartment, uh, as you can see, it is basically a deluxe college dorm. <laughs> it's pretty tiny. I have, a, it came with a futon, a little bedside table, a mini fridge, a microwave, and one stove burner, and a washer machine that is like this big. <laughs> um, I've been slowly trying to make it my own, as you can kind of see my stuff behind me. Um, yeah, it's, it's a college dorm. It's fine for me. I, I live by myself. Um, I'm completely happy. I'm very, very thankful that in my apartment complex, there's probably nine or 10 other teachers who work for my company. So I'm never bored. <laughs> if I just walk outside and yell, someone will come to the convenience store with me or, hey, do you want to have dinner? Hey, I'm going here. Do you want to come with me? So it's been a really easy way just to always be around someone and I have privacy if I want it. So it's not luxury living, but it is completely fine for me. My rent every month, I think it's about 300 USD. Uh, it's about 300 USD. I also pay for electric, gas, and water. Um, they're less than $50 a month. Yeah, I, I really haven't had much of an issue. Um, you're welcome to find your own accommodation as well as your own car. I think going through your company first is probably the best idea just because, again, I'm not fluent. I don't speak the language. I need help negotiating that stuff. Negotiating rent and a car and all of those things in your home country is difficult enough, um, let alone in a different culture. <laughs> so I am very thankful for my company for finding me this apartment. Um, not every apartment complex or housing complex is open to renting to foreigners. Um, especially for a one-year contract. So just keep that in mind. It's not the easiest thing to do by yourself. 
make sure your company can help you with it. My school, I work at one school. Um, many of the teachers that I work with are at multiple schools. I am just at one. My school is huge. It is like a university, but it's an elementary school. It's first through sixth grade. So my students range from maybe six years old to about 13. Um, and like I said, it's, it's massive. So I teach five classes a day. Um, in Japanese elementary schools, there's six periods a day. So I am teaching five out of six periods. It's a great first job, especially for Japan. Um, it's also a great first job if teaching is a complete career change for you. Teaching's not a big career change for me because as a speech therapist, I was working in public schools in America and I was tutoring online. I felt very prepared coming in just because it's similar to what I do. But I've heard from my friends who are first time teachers that this is a really great place to start because they do hold your hand a bit. Um, many people I know have actually stayed with this company for years and really enjoy it or have just stayed in Japan and moved to other companies. So that makes me feel really good, especially as someone who's on their first year of teaching in Japan. Um, my biggest con since I've been here has been my neighbor. <laughs> he, uh, God, we're better now. We had issues. Um, I was able to email my company because I didn't know how to deal with this issue. In New Jersey, you would go knock on the door and tell them that that person's being loud. In Japan, absolutely not. So I wanted to be culturally appropriate and respectful, but still get my point across. So thankfully my company was able to help me with that and pretty quickly too. One of the biggest cons I can find is that you might not have a car. I don't have a car. <laughs> I have a bike. Um, so I bike to work every day, which is great. I actually don't mind most days, but we're in June right now and it's currently the rainy season. And uh, yeah, there's there's some days I mind. I, I biked during a typhoon the other day and that was an experience. <laughs> um, so yeah, you might not have a car. Again, you're welcome to find your own if that's of interest to you, but just know it may or may not be in the cards for you. Another thing too is my company mentioned to me prior to moving here that you might not be in your dream location immediately. They ask your opinions of where you want to be, um, but you're not guaranteed. I said I wanted to be in Tokyo. That's where I want to be in the middle of a busy city. I am not, but I'm about an hour and a half from Tokyo. So I feel like it's OK. I feel like it's kind of a good compromise. Um, so just note that even though you might be dead set on living in one particular area, one particular prefecture, it might not happen. So I know the longer you stay with this company, the more leverage you have to kind of try to get into an area you want. I'm very lucky. I actually really like Ibaraki. I think it's a great first place to live. Um, it's accessible. I live very close to a train station, so I can get anywhere pretty quickly. Um, like I said, I work in an elementary school. I did have a big challenge. Um, I don't have a JTE at my school, a Japanese teacher of English. Many of my friends do, and they work specifically just with this one teacher who teaches English all day. Um, I don't have one. <laughs> so I have to work with every single homeroom teacher. And like I said, my school is huge, so I probably work with about 30 teachers. 95% of them don't know any English. So I often feel that I'm teaching the teachers and the students. Um, it took a little bit of time to kind of be able to communicate that. Um, like, I am an experienced teacher, I'm trustworthy, I can plan a good lesson, the kids will get more than enough out of each lesson. So it did take a little time to build those relationships, but I feel like I'm finally in a place now where I have a really good working relationship. Also, my Japanese, they understand my understanding of Japanese, I understand their understanding of English. <laughs> so it's about equal and we're able to communicate that way. Um, my company also has lesson plans that I use a lot. I modify, but I use, um, and their lesson plans are available in English and Japanese, and nothing makes my teachers happier more than when I hand them a piece of paper that they can read and I can read, so we're all good there. One thing I was telling my friends who were first-time teachers, kids are germs. <laughs> kids mean germs. So I would definitely invest in 
your health, make sure your mental and physical health is good. One thing about Japan is vitamin C is everywhere. Um, they take health very seriously. A lot of people take supplements here. In my first year as a teacher in America, I got so sick from just being around kids. So I would just be aware of that um, coming into any teaching position that you may get sick first. So again, with looking at the medicines, I would definitely do that immediately. I would also try to find an English speaking doctor or a doctor you feel comfortable with. Um, another thing too, masks are part of the culture here. They wear them. I've never had to ask a kid to put one on, remind them, they just do it. It's a part of life here. It's normal. I wear one basically all day. Um, the mask restrictions have been lifted, so I don't have to. It's not a requirement, but um, almost everybody does. Almost everybody does. The only time I take it off is to eat lunch or when I'm kind of like showing pronunciation, and then I put it back on. So I have a bag of like 20, and I'm still working my way through them. So I would just be aware that they are still very heavily into masks here. My students are funny. They were very timid of me in the beginning. They were very afraid. They were very nervous. They didn't know what to think of me. Um, but now, two and a half months in, I have a group of little uh, kids who just love English, who try to talk to me as much as possible. Like I said, my school is huge. I always see kids in the hallway. Hi, hey, hello, good morning. And it's so fun just to hear them use the language in a natural way. Um, I think I play rock, paper, scissors a thousand times a day <laughs> on average. Um, some kids even will give you little drawings or little crafts. Um, I got a little origami flower and I cried my eyes out <laughs> because it was so sweet. And I'm so glad that they, if English isn't their passion, that's fine. But the fact that they're comfortable with me, they want to participate and they're enjoying the lessons means the most to me. Um, I encourage them to interact with me, even if it's just a wave. Some of my students, like my first graders, don't really have a lot of words yet. So just a wave or a smile goes a long way in my book. Um, like I said, the teachers, I've been working my way with them. It, we're in a very good rhythm now. I think I would just remember you are a sensei, which you are very highly regarded. You're a role model for adults and children. So I just would remind yourself, like people are always watching at work. They expect a lot of you. So take the job seriously. The Japanese people take their jobs very seriously. School lunch <laughs> has been an adventure, but one that I actually enjoy. Um, so it's kind of expected that you eat school lunch every day. In elementary school and middle school, it's provided. Um, I pay a small fee every month. It, it's not that expensive, but I pay a couple dollars and usually it's soup, some sort of vegetable salad, um, rice, and maybe a meat. And I sometimes have no idea what I'm eating. <laughs> um, sometimes people will ask me like, oh, what did you have for lunch today? I'm like, there was a carrot, I think. I don't know. But <laughs> it's actually been an easy and cheap way to try new foods. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of enjoy the mystery of it every day. And if it stinks, you just go home and have dinner early. But eating school lunch is culturally very important to them. It's something that they really appreciate and something that um, is kind of expected. So I think they appreciate that I'm trying my best to be a part of the school culture. Cleaning. The kids clean uh, four out of five days. So for like 20 minutes after lunch, they will sweep the hallways, they'll wipe the desks. Um, they really respect the school, they respect their surroundings, so it's very expected. Every day I sweep, no one asks me, I do my job, and I actually really enjoy it. I have a group of little first grade girls who come up to me every day. I, I've taught, I teach them little songs as we're sweeping. Um, yesterday I taught them head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Um, we did the cleanup song from Barney. Um, I will happily take suggestions if anyone has any little silly jingles. And it's a great way to bond with the kids actually and they really look up to you and the staff is really appreciative that you try to clean or you're um, respecting the school as much as they do. Like I said, my schedule is pretty packed. I teach five classes a day, there's six periods. Um, and during my downtime, I study Japanese, I prep for lessons. Um, I'm also taking an online class, so I do that as well. Um, I'm never bored. <laughs> uh, friends, that's one thing a lot of people reach 
out to me about network before and after you get to Japan. <laughs> I messaged everyone on Instagram who I saw was moving to Japan, who was in the Explore Asia program, other expats I just randomly came across on Instagram. People talk to you. People really want to talk and connect. Um, I am so glad I cold messaged so many people before I came here because seriously, it was so worth it. And I made so many connections that I am so thankful for. Um, like I said, I have maybe nine or 10 other teachers in my apartment complex, which has been amazing. I've also met other teachers at trainings um, for my company, and I'm always looking to make new friends. Even if it's just a texting buddy or if it's someone who actually lives close to me, I am always trying to make friends. Push yourself to do that. I tend to be more of an introvert and I could probably stay home alone forever and be happy about it, but I'm trying to push myself to be more social and everyone else here is too. Like everyone wants to make friends. Everyone's worried about feeling alone. It's very easy to connect. Um, making local friends. I came to Japan and I downloaded dating apps, which I know sounds weird, but let me explain. People will message you just because you're a foreigner. Um, I also was able to meet friends this way. So I put in my profile that I kind of was just looking for language exchange. I was just moving here. I was looking for people to just show me the area and friends. And I actually met a local friend who's been amazing. We've gone on so many little day trips and so many trips around my area that are not on TripAdvisor. They're not on like, you know, major websites. Um, I have so much fun going on these little adventures. There's also other alternatives if you're afraid of dating apps or if that's not really your vibe, that's fine. There are texting apps as well. I think there's one called Hello Talk. I, I could be wrong, but one of my friends does it, um, mostly just for making friends and language exchange. So it's there are options to meet local people here. Even if you just put like, I'm just looking for friends, I'd like to work on my Japanese, there are ways to meet people in the country and people who want to work on their English as well. Um, overall, I really am so happy I live here. I hope my Japanese gets better. I hope one day I'll be maybe a toddler level. Right now I'm still a baby. But even though I'm practically illiterate and not great at talking, I still can get by. Um, I have so much fun. The locals are so nice. Like they appreciate that you're trying. Um, I think that's one thing, like even people who don't understand what I'm saying, I don't understand what I'm saying sometimes. Um, I think they just appreciate that you're trying to communicate. You care about the culture. You're trying to be respectful. Um, recently I went to a shrine, which we don't have in America. I genuinely did not know what to do. So I kind my friend and I were behind this couple who were Japanese and we kind of were following them along. And as we went along, they kind of invited us to hang out with them and be with them and kind of show us what to do. So I think the Japanese people are so welcoming and so happy that you're embracing their culture as long as you're respectful about it. And as long as you kind of follow along with the customs, I think they're very appreciative of it. Um, and I think they're happy to share their culture. It's such a beautiful culture here and traditions and values that I don't necessarily think we have in other parts of the country. So as long as you're respectful and you're open-minded and you thank people all the time, they thanking someone goes a long way here, bowing goes a long way. So I would definitely recommend just being open to every opportunity, all new foods and uh, yeah, everything you can get a chance to try. <laughs> also, I would love to connect with anyone who has questions, concerns, or just wants to talk. I'm mostly active on Instagram Messenger. I am active on Facebook Messenger as well. Instagram is probably the easiest way to meet me. Um, my handle is T-H-E-K-A-R-A-P-E-N-N-E-Y. Um, I'm so happy to connect. Like I said, I messaged every human possible who was either living in Japan, moving to Japan, had been in Japan. So I, I know the value of being able just to talk to someone and vent. So please reach out to me. I would love to talk to you more about my experience. I'm so thankful for those who joined me live. And if you're watching this in the future, I hope this is helpful. Please leave comments and I will try to get back to them in the next few days. Thank you so much, everyone.